Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling. My next build is the third diorama in a series of four entitled The Bridge. Uh, self explanatory, this one. Um, it's going to be the uh, bridge layer going over a crevice or a ravine laying down the bridge. Like the other two I've done, this um, one will be displayed individually or can be linked in to the previous one's build. As you can see with the illustration there, uh, that's how all four are going to look together. And if I change the illustration, this is going to be the single diorama. So you you, you have the tank above the bridge layer and uh, laying down the, the bridge on um, an uneven surface, uh, sloping upwards to create the ravine. So uh, let's get into this build. So I'm starting up with the board that I used to paint the walls on for the uh, first diorama, the road. Um, I'm just reusing the board, um, it's all going to be covered, you won't see any of the, this pattern anyway. So um, the first thing to do is to lay down the groundwork. Now I've got some white modelling clay here and um, this is air drying modelling clay. So once you put it down it'll take around about 24 hours or longer depending on how thick it is uh, by, when you uh, mould it into the shape you want. So first of all um, what I'm doing here, I'm just putting down lumps of clay and with uh, quite a bit of a depth to create to create a ravine or tank trench. And once I've got the depth that um, I'm, I'm happy with, back the uh, clay up onto the board but de decreasing the thickness as you go down uh, so you're creating a, an upward bank or hill um, as you're walking down. Now you don't want this clay to be 100% smooth, you, you want dips um, and things in the, in the clay, like make a little uh, canyons if you wish and, and things like that. It, it's got to resemble a hard part um, uh, piece of land um, so that when the foliage goes on it, it will look uh, more natural. So I'll just speed up this process and just going to carry on all, all the way um, over the board uh, doing this, uh, just putting lots of bit of clay on. It's good to squeeze out the air as well when you're doing this, when you're making the joints, um, because that will prevent um, or, or cracking. Um, even though you don't mind it being uneven, you don't want big massive cracks. So I'm just creating the um, second, uh, the opposite end of the, the crevice now, in the same way. So I took a couple of days for the clay to dry. Uh, as you can see I've already primed in grey primer and uh, now I'm just uh, placing on the base coats of paint and these are a mixture of grey, greens and browns. Um, I'm starting off with uh, green here because I've run out of brown so I'm going to have to make up uh, my own brown and green uh, saying that. So this is just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue to mix up uh, the green. Don't worry if you can if you get, can't get the exact shades uh, that you, your previous mixed on, this all adds uh, to the different patterns that you see on the ground and anyway. Plus the fact most of it will be covered up in grasses and so on. So onto the brown, I managed to squeeze out a little bit of brown on the tube here so um, I can start laying that down. And uh, like the green, I'm just stabbing this paint on uh, with my brush. I, I want thick heavy textures here to represent um, the the earth. Again there's no hard fast way to do this, I just do what you, th you think it feels natural. However, if you watched the other dioramas, other two dioramas I've already done, you'll see this is all the exact same process as the other ones. And now I'm put, putting in a light sandy colour. Um, to make up this colour you can just lighten up your brown that you use but uh, either a bit of yellow or uh, some white just to um, lighten up. You may want to put a touch of green in as well. It doesn't really matter what colours you, you, you use um, as long as it's a, a different tone definition for the inside of the ravine. So moving on to the um, placing of the foliage and everything onto the bridge diorama. Now you can see all the paint is dried, um, there's some cracks in that there which is fine, this will all be getting covered up, so it was just roughly painted. Um, I picked up one of the way, 
on holiday. I picked up some of this, uh, seen some in, and it's basically just a watered down um, white glue. And uh, you can also get a little spray that comes with it, or you can just buy uh, attach it, a spray that you a bottle you've got in the house. Just make sure it's completely cleaned out before you do so. And all you do is, no, I've not really actually used this before, but it's um, self explanatory. And just spray it on, just the glue, like so. Bit much on there, tell you the truth. I don't know how long this will take to dry. I would imagine not long, because it's quite um, thin. And I'm just going to get some of my garden to try this. Let's get that out a bit. Taking some of the rough grass, just, you know, not much of this. Just a little bit. Again, just taped it. Come on. And for this one, I'm using a bit of coarse brown, dark brown ballast. You use this sort of stuff for railway tracks and step paths and things like that. And I just um, spread it around. And that's the trench floor, almost done. And I'll save again for the, the main part, just um, put this on, a bit nice coating. First of all, I'll just use uh, some medium grass. Back to my my brown health mix, well not mine, but a ball. So we got to the situation here where it's um, mostly covered. So if this is the top part here, and that's going to be linking into the ambush uh, diorama, so this has got to res um, flow into that one. So now that I've got the basic ground coverage done, I'm just going to be putting more of the, the glue on, like so. And this is the foliage that I use for the trees. And I'm just uh, putting this on to resemble bushes and things like that. And it's also good for plugging up any holes or gaps that you see that you, you want covered. And just start adding depth as you go along. There we go. So I'll let that settle in. You don't have to wait until it's 100% dry for the next part. I'm just going to let that settle in. So now I've added the burnt grass. Um, I forgot to say, I probably said another one, so I don't quite remember. When you're adding the stuff on, don't be afraid to punch it with your fingers like that. Um, again, that creates more depth, so it's not flat. So I'm just adding these little bits of coarse turf. Um, because these are such a drastic change in colour, you don't want a lot of this if you're deciding to put it on. You just want little parts of it. It's settled down a bit, um, so it's still quite wet. So now I'm going to be um, marking where I'm going to be putting the bridge. So the bridge will obviously go around, well not obviously, uh, will go around there I would say. The funny or the tank can go here. Now the reason why I'm doing it like this now, let's get that in a bit of shot, is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tank and I'm just going to pull it like so. And you see what that's done there? That's created the tank marks there. So you just press down and push or pull to where you want it to go. So now it's time to attach everything. I've got some normal super glue here. Although this um, glue does give you a bit of leeway on times, you do want to be fairly quick. 
quick. I want to turn the camera a bit there. There you go. So you can see the bridge going over. So I'm putting quite a bit on you. If you haven't done so already, this is the Church. Uh, have a look at this build. This is the Churchill Bridge layer of the 172 skill. 176 skill. My apologies. So this is just going to go online. That will be the track track marks I've already made. And then I can line this push bar in properly. I'm just going to add a little bit of cement in there now. Everything's all dry. I haven't been healing my stuff for a week. I'll just unblock this. Actually, on YouTube the other day, someone... Not YouTube, Facebook. Someone was asking one of my Star Trek um, pages that I... Groups that I follow, how to unblock one of these. And um, what I certainly do, um, I use a lighter and light it up and that softens the cement and gets rid of any blockages and you know that's that's set in place now that's not going to move and that is this built not a lot going on um compared to the other two dioramas i did but this will link in with the other two so this is the top right hand corner of the four diorama set that I'm going to be doing. So it, it was quite a good uh, little di diorama to build. Built it in conjunction with the other one and um, as I explained on the uh, beginning of uh, the, this build of the diorama. Very simple construction, anyone can do this really. Um, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, just do what feels natural to you and, and help, let it flow then you'll find that you, the area that you're working on will flow as well just let it flow organically and you'll be fine so if you haven't done so already why don't you check out uh, the other dioramas in the series or indeed the 176 series I'll put up a link on, on the bill for you check out my channel as well for the, all my other builds there's quite a few up there if you subscribe to the channel uh, you'll get uh, future updates and of course hit that like button and uh, leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.